And good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. The chorus of calls from Wisconsin businesses ready to reopen is growing louder and louder by the day. Safer at home has flattened the curve, but the coronavirus continues to spread day by day with deadly consequences. So where does Wisconsin go from here? We will ask Governor Tony Evers, Assembly Minority Leader Gordon Hintz, and Assembly Speaker Robin Voss. But first, let's jump into the numbers, take a look at today's cases in Wisconsin. There were 314 new cases reported to the state today, but there were also more than 5,500 tests that were conducted. That is the highest to date. We begin tonight with my interview with Governor Evers. TMJ4 has learned that the governor is exploring ways to turn the dial or reopen more small retail shops across the state, perhaps ahead of the May 26th safer at home end date. Governor Tony Evers, thank you very much for making time for us. Uh, there's a lot of talk this week about trying to reopen Wisconsin next week. Do you think it is safe to begin gradually reopening Wisconsin next week? Well, and we've already done that, frankly. Yeah, to some extent, yes. There are the, 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 the data for our metrics at the state level are headed in the right direction. So I think there are some opportunities for us, but of course, um, it's gotta be safely done. It's gotta be thoughtfully done. It's gotta have science behind it. And, uh, and so, you know, we're, we always are looking for ways to uh, uh, turn that dial, as I've said, not flipping the switch, but turning that dial. And so we're, we're, we're hoping that uh, the Supreme Court will still give us an opportunity to do that. So when you look at, it's hard to predict what the Supreme Court will do, but uh, based on some of the questioning, they didn't like what was uh, given in terms of powers to the uh, DHS secretary. Give me your sense, if the order is lifted or partially lifted, what will you do next? Yeah, well, uh, again, we uh, under the present circumstances, we are looking at uh, uh, some things that we could turn that dial. And uh, if we're allowed to do that, we'll, we'll do it. But the, um, there are so many moving parts here, Charles, to, to whether it's partial, pluralities, the whole, and, and then I think they're dumping in that the, the second uh, uh, possibly using is as an opportunity to take on that second uh, case also that's out there. So I, I, we don't have any idea what the outcome could be. I know what it'd be if they s uh, support us, we'd conti continue to turn the dial. But it's hard to imagine uh, the circumstances are just, we, we don't know. We don't know until we know, unfortunately. When you say turn the dial, do you see something turning next Monday that would meet sort of the needs of some of these plans from MMAC or WMC? I'll just give you an example. And this is a hypothetical, but clearly we've been looking at which, which, which would be the next uh, good start. And of course, we always need to look at the number of people. When we bring together a bunch of people, somebody's going to get sick. You can count on it. But if we can, so we're looking at, for example, small retail businesses. Small retail businesses, whether they're in Milwaukee or Crandon, Wisconsin, are suffering. And they also, because of their size, they are not going to be bringing in hordes of people. But it will help, it certainly will help those, uh, those business owners. So that's an example, looking at ways to, and then seeing how that works, and then maybe more retail going forward. But uh, that, that, to me, that's a, a good example of a statewide approach. I know the Republicans want to talk about regional. Regionalism in and of itself is not a plan, uh, but um, I'm thinking that uh, we, can do some, we can do some good going forward, too. So, because some of the argument has been that people can go to Walmart or Target and buy some things that they can't buy, or small businesses are saying you could buy here, but they're not allowed to open. Is that the concern? Yeah, that is a concern. And, and it's also, whether it's Milwaukee or Crandon, I'll use those two again, we've always, you know, we've spent the last decade talking about buy local, buy, buy you know, uh, uh, do what you can to support local merchants and so on and so forth. And it's hard for them to compete when they're not open. And, but it's also a small enough enterprise that we can, uh, they can control the numbers of people in the store. They can, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a nice mix. And I, I'm just using that as an example, believe me, but uh, uh, we're looking at things like that. 
but restaurants, that's a different juggernaut. That, that's, that's different. And e even with us following the, uh, uh, the, the, the plan that we're following from the CDC, that's down the road. We, we need to get through this period. We're, we're looking at as long as we're having good uh, metrics and headed in the right direction, maybe there's some things we can do uh, going forward. Restaurants will get there. There's no question about it, but they're, they're going to, you know, even the states that have thrown open their doors, uh, they've, they've had very small, like 25% uh, of the spaces is allowed to be used. I, we're, we're not even there yet, but the restaurants eventually will get there. Um, let me ask you, because I know you look at the numbers, how much longer can Wisconsin sustain the current situation? I think you've seen the unemployment numbers and also uh, some new analysis out that says the unemployment money would run out in October in a worst case scenario mm -hmm. and September of next year in a best case scenario. Does that kind of nudge you or give you an added sense of urgency? No, I mean, is that a bad thing? Yes, but that doesn't give me any more urgency than I have now or right from, right from the beginning. We've, we are now are in a position because of frankly good work by people in this state about being safer at home that we've, we've saved lives. So we've also put together the testing and the contact tr tracing that we've had. That has, that has helped us being able to understand what it's like to when they have a surge, get in there, uh, nip it in the bud. So we're just in a much, much better place. Do I want people to be unemployed? Absolutely not. And we will, get, we will get them back to work, but it's gonna be a different workplace. There's no question about that. Governor Evers, we appreciate your time. When we return, I will ask Democratic State Representative and Assembly Minority Leader Gordon Hintz and Assembly Speaker Robin Voss, when will Wisconsin reopen as the safer at home order continues? And welcome back. The governor and two business groups have different plans on how to reopen the state, but we have two state leaders who may have a final say on what the final plan will look like. Democratic Minority Leader Representative Gordon Hintz and Assembly Speaker Robin Voss, a Republican. Thank you both very much for joining us. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you just heard me ask the governor if it's safe to begin what? reopening more businesses in Wisconsin next week. Is it? You know, Charles, thanks for having us on tonight and good evening to my friend, Representative Hintz. Uh, so yes, for many parts of Wisconsin, I certainly think it is safe for us to be able to begin the gradual slow process of reopening. We know that over 60% of the cases have been in Milwaukee County or Brown County. So for the vast majority of Wisconsin, there have been relatively few cases. I think it's over, I think it's 25 or 30, almost 30 uh, different counties have only had single digit cases with most of those already recovered. <laughs> So I think for the vast majority of Wisconsin, uh, we certainly can do that. We can do it safely. And I think we need to get going with it. Uh, but the speaker, uh, you probably heard the governor say he's not, doesn't seem to be in favor of a regional opening. Are you looking still more regional or you believe it should be statewide? Well, I'd prefer it to be statewide, but I think unfortunately we're probably gonna have to do a more regional approach. And the whole goal is wanting to make sure that we don't treat everybody the same. You know, For people who are in Milwaukee, it is closer for us to drive to St. Louis than it is for us to drive to Superior, but we're treating them as if they were the same. I think it makes no sense for us to have a one size fits all solution when all around the state, we are seeing different levels of the virus and certainly different economic impacts. So I do wanna thank the governor. He met with us on Monday and it sounds like he is starting to take the advice we gave him, which is we need to get some sort of a regional approach going uh, we need to make sure that we do it in a way that gets more retailers open and we need to get all of Wisconsin working again because there are far too many people who are struggling economically and that's going to have a long-term impact on our budget, our ability to fund schools and all the things that we care about. So the sooner we get this economy going safely, the more that we're going to be able to be prosperous and hopefully move beyond the virus safely. And we'll talk about the state's budget in a moment, but Representative Hintz, uh, you were at that meeting as well. Do you see a framework to start moving or turning the dial to reopen more businesses? Well, I think I wanna to get to a framework, but that framework needs to be led by public health. I mean, the reality is until we're able to manage uh, the public health crisis, it's gonna be difficult to get the economy to where we need it to be. Uh, the measures that have been taken weren't aimed at solving the crisis. Uh, they were aimed at buying time so that we would be able to solve or better manage the crisis as we get an idea on the resources, as we ramp up testing, as we're able to do um, 
you know, uh, contact uh, testing to be able to stop the spread of these things. And so we're able to manage these cases. And so I think they need to be understood hand in hand. We need to get expectations that are clear. And as tough as the last two months have been on so many individuals and businesses, um, it could get worse, right? I mean, the worst case scenario would be if we open up too early or if we let our guard down and we see the kind of transmissions that we've seen in some places that have reopened too soon um, or you know that where they've seen it return. I mean, uh, quite frankly, in the big cities, uh, New York, even Milwaukee, um, they've seen their cases flatline or even go down a little bit and there's been a lag and we're seeing an uptick in the number of cases and transmissions in rural areas throughout the country. Uh, and even in some parts of Wisconsin. So I think we need to exercise caution. That being said, um, I'm anxious and open on how we can best incrementally get the economy open, but doing so in a way that doesn't uh, pose too many risks to uh, the virus you know, ramping up and uh, spreading again. So one thing up in the air is what the decision will be from the Wisconsin Supreme Court. And Speaker Boss, let me ask you, it's hard to predict what they will do, but if somehow safer at home is lifted or partially lifted, what immediate steps will you take? Well, let's start by, I think it's a shame the way that we've gone into this. Uh, governors around the country, Republican and Democrat, have really been a, mo a more collaborative process where they brought legislative leaders together, both parties, to be able to say we're fighting the virus, not each other. That's all we've been asking for. We simply want the ability to- The governor to would say that he's, he's been- yeah, but the governor would say that he's wanted to have these conversations with you, and you did meet this past week. Well, first of all, that's not true. We sent him a letter and we've been trying to get together over and over to have this discussion, but I don't care about the past. I wanna focus on the future. I want us to have to win the lawsuit and winning the lawsuit simply means that the administration has to work with us on a plan that's safe and comprehensive, but actually include the legislature. You know, Governor Evers, I, I assume, because he's doing the safer at home, probably hasn't had the chance to leave Madison for almost two months. That means legislators all across the country in both parties have a different perspective because of where we live and who we represent. So bringing more people together, more ideas together, just this week, MMAC with some of our healthcare leaders right here in Milwaukee were able to say that they believe we should also let the order gradually expire and begin to do that reopening. So they were the very group that urged Governor Evers to do the Safer at Home two months ago. I hope he listens to healthcare leaders, business leaders, and brings in legislators to say, let's all work on this together. They shouldn't be a Republican plan and a Democrat plan. There should be a Wisconsin plan that all of us work together on so everyone has confidence we can get through this as quickly as possible and do it in a way that brings the state together and not tears us apart. Rep Representative Hintz, do you agree with that? It's gotta be some sort of plan with Republicans and Democrats and the governor signing off. Uh, it's uh, it's gonna be forced to be that way, but we've had good discussions, the speaker and I and then the governor, and I'm, I'm hopeful that that will continue. Um, this can't be a time for politics and it is challenging because the economic desperation is very real and there are health consequences there, uh, but we are still trying to, again, uh, get to a place where we can manage this, and I'm hopeful that we'll get together. I think there is a way that we can approach this. I think we need some clarity. I think we need some certainty, and I think we need to do a better job managing the expectations for the public uh, and for the businesses out there about what a reopening looks like, whenever that is, or when we hit our uh, benchmarks, why that is, and how we're doing right. with it. And you know, provide resources to help people sure. understand about density and transmission. So I think there are some things that we can work on that will help us reach, um, uh, you know, agreement. And um, I look forward to those. I think we need All to right. be committed to that. Well, we have much more to talk about. We know that COVID-19 has been hard on everyone's bottom line. Budgets are out of whack. Family budgets are being cut. But wait until you hear what's happening to the state's budget when we come back. And welcome back. We are hosting a virtual town hall tonight on Safer at Home with two legislative leaders. We have Speaker Voss and Representative Hintz. Uh, let me show you some of the numbers that I'm sure you guys saw today. Take a look at this. This is uh, what's happened to the state's budget. Individual income tax collections down $676 million from April of last year compared to this year. And then let's look at the state sales tax and that is also down $48 million from April to April when you compare those two months. Representative Hintz, when you see those numbers, what does it do to the state budget? 
I mean, it's devastating. I mean, the one challenge with a recession is not only do your revenues go down considerably, but uh, your expenses tend to go up as there's more demand for a lot of the services, especially uh, programs like Badger Care that are out there. So it's a double whammy and it's gonna force some awfully tough decisions. Uh, uh, you know, I was in office and in the majority when the last recession, when we had to make a lot of these tough decisions. So uh, we're not the federal government, we can't just print money. And if people aren't working and people aren't spending money, um, revenue is going to be down. So we've got we've got some challenges ahead of us. Uh, when you look at those challenges, Speaker Boss, you know the numbers as well. But also today we're hearing from the state's workforce development saying delays in the legislature to eliminate the one week pay, uh, waiting period for unemployment costs the state twenty five million dollars in federal dollars. Um, do you agree with that? How did that happen? Did the legislature fail to move quickly here? No, that's not accurate. So first of all, I think my friend Gordon and I agree that we're going to have a challenging budget environment. Uh, I was really proud of the last budget that we passed that increased funding for public schools and gave a raise to employees because our economy had been doing so well. One of the things that I think we really need to focus on is if you're in a hole, you stop digging. So we need to make sure that perhaps we could do some kind of a freeze for the second year of our two-year budget. I think that'd be a wise move for us to stop spending when we know we might have to make cuts later uh, as the economy comes back out of this hopefully short-term recession. So I'm really proud that the legislature in a bipartisan fashion, 97 to 2, passed uh, the ability for people to get unemployment benefits in week one. Uh, we passed it in the middle of April. We got guidance from the federal government two weeks later saying what was qualified and what was not. Now I think our uh, DWD needs to go back to the feds and work with them to get those resources back to us. It's pretty hard if the rules came out two weeks later to somehow blame the legislature for doing something wrong. I think it's just one of those things where we need to make sure we all stand together. It shouldn't be partisan again. Let's get that money from the federal government. But most important for us, we got the unemployment benefits for the people who needed them. And as my friend Gordon said, we're gonna have to work together to figure out how to balance this budget. We're not gonna raise taxes because that would be the worst thing in an economic recession on the families and the businesses who are struggling already. So we've got to figure out how to tighten our belts. And once again, we start by doing not the increases we thought we could do, but by trying to hold the line on spending and do it in a way that is fair to everybody. But Speaker Ross, you have several small businesses, but also you're going to be looking at trying to balance the state's budget. Knowing how small businesses uh, are hurting in this situation, is there really much the state can do looking at its own budget to help those who also have bad budgets? Well, you know, once again, on a bipartisan basis in Washington, which uh, doesn't happen often there either, I think they did some good things. They have the PPP loans for businesses. They, of course, gave the stimulus checks to folks who uh, were able to use that, and we have extended unemployment. So the extended unemployment runs through the end of July. So my fear is that we don't get out of the uh, recession by the time that those benefits uh, go back to normal. That's why it's so important for us to put together a safe, reasonable reopening plan regionally if we have to, to make sure that we get businesses up, back and going. So by the time we get to the 4th of July, hopefully that many of the businesses can be back to semi-normal, generating the tax revenue that we need and the revenue that they need to survive. Uh, 30 seconds, Representative Hintz, the biggest concern in the budget that would face cuts. Well, I mean, our, you know, the big programs are obviously K-12 education, uh, Medicaid, university system corrections and um, the longer we wait the harder it's going to be that because there will be fewer things on the table uh, they're all important programs and they're all important programs during this recession I think it's true that we don't have the resources that we would like to be able to spend to provide the assistance to people we're not the federal government uh, and that's going to remain a challenge but I do think policy wise if there are changes or things that we can make or there are benefits that were passed in this last legislation yep. that are to expire that we consider mm -hmm. those and we'll be ready to act if we can act. Representative Hintz, Speaker Voss, we thank you very much for your time on this very important topic. That's all the time we have for our conversation tonight. Again, gentlemen, thank you for joining me to talk Thanks, about Charles. this very important topic. We'll be right back.